welcome our last speaker of tonight, Professor Pierre Fafiotis. Uh, he's joining us from Karlsruhe, where he was the Dean um, of the Architecture Faculty of the Karlsruhe Institute for Technology, and he was the Chair of Architecture Theory. Um, Pierre has focused his work on the technical implications uh, of, the, of the digital age on the field of architecture, and he's currently the Professor of Theory of Architecture uh, and Digital Culture at the TU Delft. Okay, cool. So uh, I will, uh, I, I, I see myself here, I'm, so I speak to myself, it's a bit weird, uh, but I'm um, recently applied, um, uh, I joined the Delft faculty like eight weeks ago, uh, and I uh, um, will uh, run the a group for theory of architecture and digital culture. So this is the focus uh, of, uh, of the group. And um, so let me let me start uh, first of all uh, the uh, to give an idea about my position. Um, so um, that means that um, the the um, let's say the position of, of the chair is is to question the digital environment and all this um, let's say data supported architecture, as Yantin uh, uh, put it. Um, so my focus on the, is on the reflection uh, of what and how to design. Um, and uh, to give you, uh, to give you a, another starting point, um, it is about the meaning of technology. So it's not about developing skills, uh, it's about uh, the meaning of these um, skills and, uh, and, and tools. Um, and I think in order to do so, uh, we have to uh, keep in mind that, um, personally speaking, one of the key questions for architects um, and, of course, uh, for our society uh, at the beginning of the 21st century is what does it mean to design uh, in, in such a strange, uh, let's say, um, reality that, that seeks its balance between big data, AI, um, quantifiable, um, let's say, methods, um, global migration, and this kind of urgent environmental um, issues we are facing on. And I think after the wonderful talk Yantin gave us, um, and I'm very thankful for Yantin that she she spoke very clearly about um, the connection of reality and models, about the power of uh, and, and data, and, but also um, about the limitations of data. And to contextualize a bit um, uh, Yantin's talk, but also uh, Victor's talk about the automated landscape, is uh, I, I want to I want to open up some some historical chapters here, uh, and. Um, and to also give you some, uh, let's say, references or um, uh, historical tools um, to, to better uh, reflect what's going on. So one of the key exhibitions, by the way, uh, and all the, the research uh, behind the exhibition was by an architect, an artist, Georgi Kepesh, called The New Landscape in Art and Science. And what you can see here um, is that that uh, speaking about data, um, about uh, new information technologies, was always a question about um, investigating visibilities and invisibilities in our uh, society. So speaking about or reflecting data-supported architecture means also to reflect um, uh, invisibilities and visibilities of this uh, kind of technological society. Um, you should know that the architects always were involved um, in, yeah, let's say, explaining um, information technologies. So here, Ray and Charles Eames created wonderful uh, little movies um, in the 50s and 60s uh, for uh, IBM to explain how a computer is working, to explain uh, the communication channel, to explain what, uh, let's say, uh, automation means for, for society. Um, they created wonderful um, exhibitions. Um, think about, we are in the, in the 70s, so this exhibition with the title A Computer Perspective, also curated and designed by, uh, by Charles and Ray Eames, was from 71. And the title uh, also shows that, that uh, back then they 
they uh, also were in the so-called computer age, uh, as you can see here. So there was always this attempt to, let's say, um, demystify um, technology for, uh, for architecture. Another um, quite important exhibition was the exhibition Software and its New Meaning uh, for, for Art. Another exhibition also from, from um, uh, 71. Um, and also here, it was about the meaning uh, of new information technologies, let's say robotics um, for uh, the society uh, of the 70s. Of course, these exhibitions were part of a larger movement in the 60s and 70s, where um, especially the Architecture Machine Group, um, um, which was founded by, by uh, the architect Nicolas Negroponte at MIT, tried to develop all kinds of tools um, and not only drawings tools. So, so they don't, um, it was not only uh, the attempt to, let's say, um, um, yeah, develop uh, the, the computer as a drawing machine, but also to develop concept how to cooperate with the, with the computer. So this was the, the time where architects start, let's say, dreaming uh, about uh, artificial intelligence and having the computer as a kind of uh, partner and not just as a, uh, as a tool. So, um, and keeping that in mind, um, there's a quite interesting question um, from the 19th century uh, by a German architect Heinrich Hübsch. And this kind of super interesting question uh, from, from 80s, uh, 28 was, in what style should we build? So if everything is possible and um, uh, in, in, in terms of um, techno technological reproduction in the, in the 19th century already, if everything is possible, how, how, in what style and what kind of style should architects build? So this was the question back then already. Um, of course, today um, it's not about style anymore. And I think this is quite key to understand that, um, uh, let's say, talking about a data supported architecture um, um, is not, uh, let's say, a question of, of, uh, of style. So the idea of, let's say, an organic, organic approach to, um, to architecture in terms of, let's say, Hadid or uh, Schumacher, is not necessarily the solution or the answer to this, um, to this uh, question on data on, and architecture. So instead of, of um, keeping uh, or, or keep, let's say, asking this question of, of, uh, of style, we should, we should ask ourselves for which society should we build? So I think this is also crucial to keep in mind uh, what is the goal for, for which society should we build in, uh, or design uh, in architecture? And then we can uh, break down a bit the, this huge question. And I think this is quite relevant for our debate today. So it's not only about society, but with which materials should we build or with which resources should we build or um, uh, uh, with which data should we build? So this is the let's say one of the, uh, of the key questions today, and it's not anymore the, uh, the, the focus of, uh, of style, let's say. But um, is that really true? Is, is the question of style really um, not, uh, let's say, uh, um, yeah, necessary anymore? You can see here, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and, and uh, Frank Gehry, um, and uh, yeah, Gehry, um, uh, was designing the new headquarter for, uh, for Facebook. And the question is how, how um, should we design a headquarter for a big data company? So what does that mean? Um, is it a question of style again, or is it a question of data? And um, Gary, uh, you know, as you know, I think created this uh, um, huge a uh, huge model, and he uh, uh, he yeah he you know um, did a lot of kind of camouflage ecological um, uh, design uh, aspects for for this kind of roof garden. But what is quite interesting is that if you have a look into the the, the model, 
you can see how he organized the company, how he structured the office spaces for a big data company. So I think this is also very interesting to keep in mind how uh, companies um, uh, structured their they headquarters to, um, to better operate um, on, uh, on, on different levels. So you see this, this image of the, of the office uh, of, uh, of Facebook. And you can see immediately a similarity uh, with the so-called office, office landscapes from the, from the uh, team Quickborn, which was a team of um, uh, young architects back then in the 60s. So Gary chose uh, a design approach from the 60s to, um, let's say, uh, develop a new kind of office landscape for a big data company like, uh, like Facebook. And the reason I think is that Team Quickborn understood architecture as a kind of a network uh, of information, communication, and data. So the, the idea of Team Quickborn was to say, um, it's not about the uh, uh, a building anymore, but architects should start thinking in networks, uh, should start thinking in, let's say, communication channels uh, and information technology. So it's the end. It's about designing networks. So this was the approach from uh, from Team Quickborn, and I think there's a quite a similarity to to Gary's approach um, uh, in designing for for Facebook. Oh, let's take um, the the design of the new headquarter by Bjarke Ingels for Google, which uh, which you can see here. Uh, you, you see a huge roof um, covering uh, the landscape with. Uh, some you know cubes uh, under the roof and here you can see wonderful similarities let's say to early visions of uh, of, uh, of of fry Otto to deal with environmental issues issues as a uh, as an architect covering um, uh, the landscape and, and entire cities um, or if you go uh, if you have a look into the interiors of this google headquarters another I mean, one of the big uh, data companies, you can see how uh, Jake Ingels uh, somehow, um, yeah, redesigned the, ex uh, the, the pavilion for the Expo Montreal um, exhibition in 67, also designed by, by Fry Otto. So you have this huge roof and then the, the flexible cubes and, and terrace landscapes under the roof. Again, there's a wonderful uh, discussion or, or a question why there are so many similarities between the design of big data um, companies and let's say the, the visions uh, uh, um, uh, from the 60s, 60s and, um, and 70s. So both approaches, both designs, um, the Google and the Facebook, of course, um, uh, have in common that both uh, companies need this kind of spaces, the, the data rooms um, you, should, uh, you should know. And again, I want to, to highlight this also, this, uh, let's say the, the, the uh, a data room is a question of, uh, of design and, um, and, and the organization of space. And there you can wonderful uh, connect the, the design of a lot of data rooms to, let's say, uh, the total city approach by Swiss architect Fritz Haller, um, where he um, also uh, developed huge, let's say, um, urban models based on, on statistics and, um, and, uh, and data in a very um, aesthetic and also geometrical way. So again, it's, I think it's key to somehow reflect on all these technologies to develop our own data supported and data driven uh, architecture history, because there is a history. So the question with which data should be built um, is uh, I think key and Jantin showed us that there are of course um, many different le uh, levels of, of using data and creating these uh, models. And the question I mentioned before for which society should we build is, uh, I think, key to um, better contextualize the question of technology. So 
Technology is always a question of society and culture, and society and culture is always a question of technology. So there's a, a, a kind of a, um, a, a great interplay of all these um, uh, uh, questions and issues. So and I think we have to keep this in mind if we want to pose the question of, uh, of data and or big data and architecture. And I think we have to keep this in mind if we want to, um, let's say, um, reinvent also the, uh, the um, yeah, let's say the figure of, uh, of the architect. And of course, talking about societies and uh, technologies, um, we always have to keep in mind that it's uh, about certain values, so not everything is uh, quantifiable. And this big issue we are, um, let's say, facing today about program, so-called program uh, uh, racism, which is uh, now a huge project um, in Delft, but also in the University of Amsterdam with the so-called Civic AI Lab. Um, uh, um, was back in the in the 70s uh, a huge um, research um, let's say topic in the history of urban design where the so-called um, there was a group they they used this kind of um, shelling model to understand um, uh, segregation in, in different cities so they so they used um, computer simulation in the in the 70s and 60s and 70s to better understand um, the uh, the process of uh, segregation. So, and uh, to 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 give to give all these questions and references and um, and um, discussions a kind of platform or, or stage, we we um, um, we organized a, a little conference last no two weeks ago with the title Repositioning an Architecture in the Digital. And I think the, the title is also key for our debate today. And I think it's not about repositioning the digital in architecture, but I think we have to reposition ourselves uh, in this kind of te technological uh, web, which is um, uh, surround us. So your question, how will big data change your design? I would say um, we have to redefine or uh, rewrite this question. So, uh, so it should be, um, how will big data change the cultural, social, environmental, and political conditions of your design? And I think this is also key to keep in mind that it's, um, it's about new conditions. And the question for the new conditions of design means that we have to question what kind of knowledge do we teach? What kind of knowledge do you need as, uh, as, uh, as architects? Thank you.